Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the RCB Radio Sports Show, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.e. My name is uh, Jim Conlon, I'm joined by a regular uh, RCB sport analyst, uh, Nicholas Ring, renowned Clare sports journalist, uh, Seamus Hayes. And for tonight's uh, special show, we're joined by the Clare Minor Hurling Manager for 2021, uh, Terence Chaplin. And we're also joined by the Clare Under-20 uh, Hurling Manager for 2021, uh, Sean Dyle. And I suppose, um, if I can start off with you, Seamus, uh, Hurling's back at the weekend. Uh, Clare are both in uh, Antrim uh, playing that. So the GA season is upon us. And uh, today was a very important day as well in terms of our underage uh, inter-county hurling teams. They received uh, some positive news in terms of they can finally, after spending all winter basically doing Zooms and strength and conditionings online, they can, they can actually plan to go back on the field. And maybe for the first time in ter terms of Terence and Sean, to see what players that they have at their disposal for the upcoming year. Yeah, great news today. I suppose like it's the news that all hurlers and, and footballers have been waiting for just to get back out on the field uh, and, and get training and confirmation that uh, the competitions which weren't concluded last year will be concluded uh, at, at minor and under 20 level. So, uh, you know, we're just waiting now for details of when these fixtures will take place uh, because obviously whenever they will take place it will impact with the counties as to when they can run their club competitions. But uh, the good news is that, yes, it's, it's back. Uh, and I'm sure the lads have been, they've been dealing with the players online uh, for the past number of months, but now they'll get to see them all together in person uh, from next week on. Uh, and I, it may, I suppose it might be pose a few problems for uh, Terence in particular in that uh, you're coming up to a leaving cert time and, uh, uh, you know, you minor, a lot of players at that age would be facing into exams. And uh, so he'll obviously be wait, anxiously waiting dates uh, for the, the minor competition uh, to know when he'll be able to go full blast at it. But uh, yes, good news, Jim. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Seamus, in terms of hurling as well, uh, in terms of going forward, we are we aligned to know what sort of the competition's formats will be this year? Will it be very much in similar to last year in terms of straight knockout, or will we go back to the maybe the round robin we saw with the minors and maybe the under-20s uh, in terms of the sum, sort of summer hurling that we were used to? Could that be pushed out later on in the year in terms of the cluster now of fixtures, uh, do you imagine? I, I my guess would be that it will be similar to last year because of the shorter time that's available, and if you're to fit in club competitions and if you're to allow for uh, exams, etc. Now, obviously, anyone in charge of teams and, and even and indeed players will want uh, you know the, the league format to give them more games and a better opportunity to assess where they're at and to try themselves out. But um, I've no I've no inside knowledge or anything now. But my guess is that it will be similar to last year and that. Um, you know, it'll be more or less knockout. And I suppose, Nicholas, uh, in terms of uh, Clare underage start of hurling, we've uh, we'd appeared in a All Ireland quarter final there recently, a Munster final. Uh, we have a few players now beginning to make the step up into the senior squad: Keen Galvin, Shane Meehan, Connor Hegarty, Dear McCahill, just a, a few uh, to to name. Uh, obviously, young Rogers there from Scarif as well. So. Bit by bit, we're seeing uh, players coming through the systems now and from minor, the 20s, onto the senior. And that was probably happening for a few years, but it seems to be happening once more. So that's only beneficial uh, for Clare Hurling, uh, young blood coming through. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I suppose we can't, we can't say enough of how important minor and under 21 is, under 20 now, uh, is for, 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 for any team, like in, in, for Clare, it's important, it, it, you know, what the, the work the lads are doing now, what Terence and, and Sean are doing at the moment, like, is, is is going to really show up in the future, like. And I know Sean has been there a few years, and we've seen the lads coming through his squad. They're, they're coming, coming on to the senior team now. And and, and that's that's the importance of the underage. You know, people might look at it, it's only under 17, it's only under 20. But it's vital to the, the, life, it's the lifeblood of our game, like, you know. Yeah, and and it's a big stepping stone for any young fella to get a clear jersey at at this at this hour of their life. Like it can define their whole future. Like and and 
and, and to be trained and under, under the lads there, like in, in, in a, a professional setup, like that will set him up for life. And I've seen the guys, I see Ed McCarthy and my own club men, I've seen how much he has come on by being involved in the, in the county setup. You can see his dedication, you can see that he was set on the right road, if, if, if you know what I mean, by, by these lads. So the importance, it, it, we haven't won in our island in a while, we haven't won a lot, but the, the work has been done and the work has been put in. And and and, and that's what the that's really important. Uh, and to, you know, maybe we don't see that so much, but that's that is vital like for the for the future of our senior team and you know for club teams as well to have lads on on, on the uh, as underage level play for the county. It's a huge it's a huge plus because they bring back to that that's their club mates and their teammates at club level. And 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 they can they can show them that this is how we do this. As, as, as our training basis when we were training with the lads. So their, their work is enormous. And it's going to be difficult this year for the two boys because uh, the two managers, because uh, we don't know what form. I, I, I don't know how you're picking a panel because it's, it's, it's not, there's no guidebook there now at the moment, like because there's been no games. You know, so it's going to be a tough one to get the lads back training now and see who's, who, who you know, where, where players are at and, and, and all that, you know. So, It'll be tough. It's it's uh, very tough for any manager, I think, with this COVID now, you know, and, and you're looking at the age, you're waiting, waiting for today's announcements and then you're waiting for further announcements. It's an awful lot of hard work to be done. Like, it's organising teams for training and on. I, I'd say, you know, it's just you have to go check all the boxes and, and there's so much to be done now. There was an awful lot to be done anyway, but now it's it's, geez, it's, hard, it's hard work for, for the lads there. I'd say that they, they'll tell you, like, how much how much effort has to be put in just to get a training session mm. going so you know to, 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 it, it's huge work like a huge workload I'm sure I'm sure the two boys will tell you that like. I suppose Nicholas in terms of the squads I suppose we see an evolving sort of door obviously when some players uh, come to the end of their life cycle in terms of the, the senior hurling squad obviously young blood is needed to refresh and we see people for work commitments or maybe like people who play on the panel for a long year of time like Conor McGrath, Peter Dogan, work commitments, travelling, they all start to step away. So it never uh, has, for many time people were looking at the Clare squad in the past and saying it's a young squad, they're going to be there for a long time, the 2013 squad. But bit by bit that squad is dwindling, those lads, are, they were there dwindling down. So it needs to be uh, all the time, there needs to be young blood coming through, young competition to really start to drive that on again because obviously just because Clare had success in 2013 with a young team that doesn't mean that young that young team will be there forever and bits and parts of it will drift away with time we see Shane Amore taking a step back so it opens up the door for players coming through the academy system uh, if they're good enough to jump straight in yeah, this is this is a this is sport like I mean, if you look at the Great Dublin football team take that for instance since since, since uh, uh, Jim Gavin took over, that team has changed completely. It's not the same team that started. So they, they keep they keep changing. New players come, keep coming in all the time into into that Dublin team. And it was the same with the Kilkenny Hurlers. They didn't just stay, uh, you know, was players being added all the time. And there's why your under age structure is really is so important that that, that you have to, you have to have people coming in, obviously. Like, and and you know, there's people stepping away you now. In 2013, it doesn't seem that long ago in, in, in my mind. Those, those players are very young players at that time. And look how quickly now there's uh, there, how many of them has, has finished up their careers and, 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 and so on. And especially in the last year, there's a few, a few of them gone. Like, and and, and uh, so, you know, you, you, uh, the way hurling is now, one time you could hurl up to 34 or 5, even at the top level. Now you're finished at 30, like most people. And, you know, it's... It's a lifestyle. Somebody said it there. I can't remember who said it there. With you, you had it's, it's, it's you know to, to play in the county hurling now at the moment. It has to be a way of life because it's, it's five five nights, six nights a week, and a match and a match as well. And 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 it's all the preparation. It's all the the diet. It's all the gym. It's all the you know. It, it has to be a choice. Like it's it, you know like in my day. You could go out and have a few pints and you played your match and you you you, you train twice a week and that was it like and 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 uh, and you you, you train hard like and, and you and you and you play it hard. 
But now it's a commitment. I, I, I see the lads up there at club level. The commitment is huge. I couldn't imagine us doing that back in the day. Like, so it's, it's it, you know, you'd have to be really 100% you know, wanting that jersey, whether it's a club or a county jersey, obviously to get a county jersey, it's a huge commitment and you have to make that commitment 100%. I, I don't think there's room for anything else in your life very much, you know, that that that, that, that much like, they, they go off to the Hinch and go off to the Spore and go off to the Willie Clancy's and all that as young people like to do. I certainly did my day. Uh, uh, you know, that's that's not even an option now. It's, 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 it's a serious game now and serious people playing it. And I suppose, Terence, uh, if I can come to you, uh, congratulations. Uh, you were part of the minor management uh, set up last year. You've taken it on to try to step up uh, this year in terms of being uh, the minor manager. First of all, what, uh, what was that experience like uh, last year being involved and what made you want to go forward this year and put your name for the top spot and taking over from Brian Coffey? Yeah, so uh, last year I was, I was involved with Brian as a as a selector, um, like I'd worked with Brian up along the development squads. Uh, we went in at the same year we started off with a under 14 squad and worked our way up through. Um, and, and Brian eventually became, we said, manager um, last year. So asked me to be a selector and I was delighted with that. Um, I suppose in terms of, of last year and how it worked out, um, like it would have started off like any other year, normal, uh, we say getting together in, in late November, early, early December. We had ran our, our series of, of trial games and got the got the numbers down from roughly around seventy five down to down to a working panel of, of forty players, um, and also then we we said Flannins and Tuller were going very well, so we were able to get get a, lo a lot of game time and a lot of good game time into the rest of the lads, and we had we had five or six excellent um, challenge matches. We played Galway, we played Wexford, we played a number of of club under twenty one teams, so. With the, with the schools going well and, and with that side of it going well, we were starting to to, to build a bit of momentum and and, and t t things were moving along nicely. But um, I suppose like when, when COVID hit, then um, we went into lockdown. It was, it was new territory for everyone. Mm. Um, so like eventually when we got back out onto the field, I, I suppose we never got the, the same momentum back again. But like when, when you look into it, like. There, there's a few things like we say through no, no one's fault. Um, like you, you had the, the county championship ran late uh, due to we say some of the, the the teams had lads that were involved in in being close contacts with COVID and, and situations like that. So we actually only got our full panel together three weeks before we, we played Cork. Um, and then on on that weekend we actually had a, a challenge match against Wexford, um, which went very very well, uh, but. Uh, but for for one instance, um, uh, Keith Smith, who would have been one of the one of the stronger players the year before, even for for Fergal Lynch in reaching the the Munster yeah. final and uh, All Ireland quarter final, he he broke his collarbone in in, in two places. Um, and then we say you you you, you factor that into to, to young lads in, and and they're just looking at I would say someone who has been there the year before who who. Who has been one of the, the leading players, and we say even in that game he, he had scored two two or two three from play. So it it, it really did we say deflate the lads themselves. Um, like it's it's um, we we had two other challenge matches then organised. Uh, we were due to play Galway, and we were due to um, we we're actually due to, to play Galway in two, in, in two games, and. Um, the, the GA decided then that the, that, uh, the challenge matches were, were no longer um, allowed. So we'd say basically we had that Wexford game, and then we had we had two um, we had two in-house games leading it, leading into the court game. But like um, we'd say as a management, and I suppose even from talking to some of the players, like we, we still would have been disappointed in ourselves from from the overall performance below in Turles against Cork. We say um, definitely there there are players in that team that will go on. We we'll say to to play probably with Sean this year and definitely over the next couple of years to to, to make the mark at senior level. But uh, the nature of the beast it, at knockout, you get one go of it. If it doesn't work out for you, unfortunately you don't you don't get it you don't get a second chance at it. So kind of 
that 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 was the outline of the year. As I said, it's true no one's no one's fault. But at the same time, when you take all the circumstances into account, um, like th- th- there is a lot in it there. And I suppose, uh, Terence, uh, in taking on this gig uh, in terms of this year, and I suppose it brought, uh, obviously it throws up so many challenges. You will probably have some of the crew that were involved uh, last year on the panel. Then you probably have players as well that probably haven't played an inter-county game, let alone a club game in maybe over 18, 19 months. Maybe some players might uh, in their first year who might be competing for your squad probably haven't played an inter-county game going back since under-14 level. So it's it's really a sort of a unique year in terms of players that... Uh, all of them going into the minor level are going to be very raw in terms of obviously first not playing club hurling with the long absence and then obviously not getting to play inter-county games, some of them for maybe up on 18, 19 months. Yeah, that, that's correct. Like, and when you, when you look at it um, at, from last year's panel, we'll say that that finished off below in Turles, we, we have six players, four, four players would have would have seen action that day, uh, two, two players wouldn't have. Um, so like, at the beginning of the year, like obviously we knew that we'd be going into some COVID restrictions and lockdowns and that. So like we, t- we took the decision as a, as a management to, to bring forward all the players that were with the development squads at, uh, under, 50, at under 15, this age group at under 15. And we also then with uh, Donald Maloney is working with the, this year's under 16 uh, crew. So we, Donald has, has sent forward a number of players. So like at the moment, what we're operating at is, is up around this, the, between 65 and 70 mark in, in, in player wise. Um, like, and you're like 100% correct in, in terms of, of games and, and then lads haven't played games. Because if you look at it, they, they didn't play schools competitions last year. They didn't play an under 16 club competition. They didn't play under 16 uh, def- development squad competitions. So like it would have been very unfair in us and near on impossible anyway to, to pick one over the other without bringing them all forward and um, we say giving them all, giving them all an opportunity to to put their hand up and and stake stake a claim for 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 the panels. You want to move to Jim? I know I will. Yeah. Uh, if I can come to you, Sean, uh, in terms of the uh, Clare uh, under-20s, I suppose. You've been around, Sean, for a few years now. You've been involved with the minors. Then you made the progression up to the sort of 20s, a sort of such. So for you, uh, in terms of Terence, you probably have a fair idea of some of the, most of the players that are coming through to you trying to compete for a spot this year on the Clare under-20s. Yeah, sure. Um just about six or seven of the players that know that have played it's a bit of third, third year on the on 20s mm-hmm. so we started off you could say two years ago very young and we took on to, on, to get on there but what i like to reiterate the club the club is the core to, to every player coming forward and without that you, you haven't much coming you you need the club you need good coaches there to bring it on to the next level and in this this team, two three years ago in the in the minor championship, which I would see them, I would like to see the minor championship have at least two two games. We know the under twenties is a knockout competition. You you know that going into it, but I think the minors should have a second second chance, no matter what, because players can flop on the day and it can it can it can just happen. But even with Brian Lohan this year, um, he's four he's four on the senior panel. But he, we, we got together there during the year and he put a development squad together as well. And we brought, there was 10 players involved in that. And we didn't actually go best, best, best. We kind of put it range as like, because a couple of the players that came through from Terence's squad last year, Adam Hogan and Oshin O'Donnell, we put them in just to see what, what, they, what they would feel like that under the stewardship of Trevor Slattery there. He's doing the SNC, which was a complete so, very good success. I think it's something that should be done going forward. It gives an interaction between the seniors and under and under twenties. Jamie Fitzgibbon now has done serious work in the last three months, and I'd say they'll be like lambs going out into a field for the first time next Wednesday evening when they get to the field, and we better do a bit of hurling. But overall, I know in the last two years injury 
injuries have probably killed our squad for last year and COVID in last year. Because coming up to the match against Tip last year, I'd say up to two o'clock, we did not know if that game was going ahead. And only for TG4, I'd say that night, that game probably wouldn't have gone ahead because we had a, a, a breach of COVID, but the game still went ahead. It, was, it robbed us of a couple of players. But still, they played very well last year for the first, first half. And then it was actually physical power that got Tip over and Tip were a decent team they had a lot of players that won the All-Ireland from the year before but look really looking forward to this we have 26 players from last year's panel and we don't need we don't need to bring in 10 and obviously we have to let go a few after a few weeks but hopefully looking forward to it the first thing great to get back in the field which is the main thing at the moment and I suppose, Sean, in terms of commitment now, in terms of players, obviously they've been through the minor system. So in terms of doing the strength and conditioning and adhering to maybe the runs that they would have to do on their own, obviously more is expected of them in terms of knowing what it's like having been through that system. So you're very much onus on the players in terms of responsibility to put in the hard work themselves, to be in good shape, to come back to the field. Whereas Terence now, some of those lads are 15 or 16. It's a whole new experience for them in terms of fitness or learning what it's like to be an inter-county player so obviously you obviously hope that your lads uh, show high standards in terms of their own sort of professionalism I, uh, they have to have to take at this stage they have to take on responsibility themselves and in all fairness they do we give out a program every Sunday for the last three months of what they have to do for the week and then they come back with the results every week so Jamie has kept a great eye on that and you have to do that it's a lifestyle choice now Jim um, for an in, if you want to be an inter-county hurler you have to change your lifestyle and you have to do it for a few years and some people stay with stay with the course and some people don't and going on our own this year I I, we held no trials, even though you you would like to hold a trial, but you just you just can't. You couldn't start holding trials next week, no, because you can't waste three weeks. But it is a lifestyle ch- choice, and you see the difference. And Terence will see that from from minor players to under twenty, their whole body shape changes a lot in them two years. And we added another person. Paul Flanagan has joined us as well now this year. We're just hoping to get an extra couple of percent on development mind development, st- things like that, that you need someone specialist as well. Because some players go out, no matter how good they are, they could be the superstar in a challenge match. But when it comes down to play inside in Turles or Parky Keeve or, or Limerick or inside in their own park in Innes, players might freeze and they don't get into a game for 20 minutes. So it's just something we're trying to bring to it as well this year. And I suppose, uh, Seamus, if I can come back to you now uh, in terms of uh, minors and uh, what's expected in terms of under 20s as well, in terms of uh, development of uh, sort of players as such. Uh, we were so used to maybe at times we took it for granted of player getting to minor all Ireland's or under 20s and stuff like that. And it's, we've got to rethink now it's all about developing players. <laughs> Yes, it's very important. Uh, I suppose the, the the development squad system is important. Um, the, the I feel sorry for both Terence and Sean this year, especially because they haven't had the opportunity of uh, college games where they would be able to see players in competitive situations. Like we've had no second level colleges at all this year, and we had a disrupted college scene last year. And it's the same uh, with the total level uh, competitions, like no Fitzgibbon Cup this year, you know, and those competitions were uh, vital, in my opinion, for county managements at minor and under 20 level in getting to see the, the players perform uh, in, 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 in uh, competitive situations and when there would be a lot at stake. So, you know, they've, to, they've had to contend with that for the last, uh, last year and this year in particular. Uh, but the importance of the, the um, academies. Uh, you know, in, in the county academies and the development squads uh, is particularly uh, uh, vital right now because players have to learn what's involved at inter-county level. I suppose, you know, going back, as Nicholas was saying there, go back in the day, uh, if you were picked on a county minor team, you were called into training and maybe twice a week for just a couple of weeks before you played the championship. You know, nowadays uh, you're preparing for six months before you play uh, at, at that level, um, you know, and th- there was inter-county competitions at under 14, the Forest still under 15, under 16, 
And, you know, players come through those and they haven't been there for the last year or two because of COVID. So there, there are a lot of changes have taken place and it makes it more difficult for people like Terence and Sean and their management teams, I suppose, to get squads together. Uh, but it is a lifestyle choice now, you know, the days of uh, fellas playing other codes uh, and didn't turn it out for their county and either holding or football at the weekend uh, are long gone. If you're, you know, if you aspire to be a county player, you have to focus on that uh, and the days of dabbling in other sports, uh, particularly other field sports, um, are, are gone. And, you know, people have to make a choice. I don't know whether it's a good or a bad thing having to make a choice so young. You know, people need a few years, I suppose, to suss out where, um, where they're going. But uh, it is, development is crucial now. And that's why you'll see so much of strength and conditioning coaches and uh, all these backroom professionals that you need, uh, you know, to prepare uh, and it's gone that big. And I suppose, Seamus, uh, for the last uh, year or so, we've seen minors play in empty stadiums and the likes of uh, Parky Cueve, uh, Gaelic Grounds, and sort of stuff. There's news today that maybe, given uh, the, how good we do in terms of our vaccination and how many people are vaccinated, that we might see sprinklings of crowds in terms of uh, inter-county competitions later on in the year. And for a minor, a 16 or 17-year-old that experience a, a minor uh, championship game, I suppose they do sort of feed off the crowd as well in terms of that adrenaline and hearing the sort of roar. I suppose playing in front of empty stadiums can be a bit eerie sometimes as well. So would that be a sort of a, a, get that sense of what it's like on terms of match day if we have crowds and uh, in those packed uh, in those stadiums like Parky Cueve and sort of this year and in terms of uh, giving them the whole inter-county experience which probably the minors uh, from last year uh, missed out on Yeah I think uh, playing in front of crowds uh, is part of the development of a player really you know because you know when they start when players start out at 10, 11, 12 you know they probably only see their parents or a few family members on the side and watching their games at that level and as you come up along the line then the crowds get bigger and you know if you make it onto into county minor teams you know you're they're usually uh, and in the latter stages at least on as cotton raisers to senior games so the crowds are getting bigger and bigger so it's part of the development of a player getting used to playing in front of a crowd and you know trying not to be upset by the crowd but at the same time learning to uh, you know, to, to deal with the O's and O's to come from the stand and come from the, the sidelines. So it's, it's it's all part of it. And uh, I don't think we'll see too many crowds at games this year, unfortunately. You know, I'd say they'll be small enough until we'll be towards the last round of championships. Uh, but at least there was one good move last year where, uh, particularly at minor level, um, uh, uh, one parent at least from each child was allowed to attend games, uh, you know, which was important. But uh, it is part of it. It's a difficult scene, I suppose, to go into an empty stadium, especially the big stadiums, which are capable of holding 40 to 70,000. And to go in, you know, for a player to go in there and no atmosphere, uh, you know, if there's no crowd. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a different ball game, really. But there's so many... The, the life has changed in so many ways uh, in, in the last year. And uh, I don't know, will we ever get back to what was the norm two years ago? Hopefully we'll get back to full crowds and stadiums in the not too distant future. But um, I think a lot of changes have taken place uh, and we'll never again go back in some cases. And I suppose, Nicholas, uh, in terms of the structures that we have there in, at the moment, in terms of provincial systems, uh, in terms of underage, and we know it's a carbon copy, and we've seen so many changes to uh, the, the seniors start to sit up as well. Would it be, is, is time really come about that maybe it should be an all-Ireland sort of approach, uh, maybe to underage, sort of minor in terms of that, where uh, we go, go to Champions League? Or do you think the provincial system is still very much important in the minor? Grade. Yeah, uh, I, I don't see it being changed anyway, first of all. And uh, I, I think there's something very romantic still about a Munster Championship. Like it's not it's not like what it was like. But God, wouldn't we love to win a Munster Championship at, at minor or, 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 or only 20? Uh, the, the only problem I have with the structure is that they, I don't think the minor should have never have been reduced to 17. And I think the under 21 should have stayed at under 21. That's the only. I, th I think. Uh, Especially at the, at the, the minors, they're very young to be playing in big, uh, you know, when there was crowds there, you know, it's, it's, you, you're looking at, at 16 year olds 
and 17 year olds and you're thinking they're 18 it's very hard to adjust to it from even looking at it like you know and you're expecting more than you know that, that, that extra year Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is anyway. You have to play with what you have. But uh, I, I like the idea of the most of the championship. I, I'm old school, obviously, but I, I, I like that system. Would an All-Ireland system be any better? I, I don't know. You know, it, 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 is, would, it, would it improve things? It'd be, it'd be a whole new ball game, you know, and, and, and it might take way more than more than that to, to, to games like it would be something like the Premiership in England, then because you know, I, I think Leinster finals and Munster finals, especially, are, are, are big days for, for, for underage as well. Like, so you know, I, I, I wouldn't be in no rush to change the structure if they can go for something better. I'll be it, like you know, and, and all ages and all groups to get get, get, uh, get catered for. But I'm sure the lads would be delighted to be playing Munster Championship hurling, you know, and uh. You know, there's an awful lot of history attached. There's an awful lot of, you know, so much involved. And I suppose, Nicholas, uh, in terms of, Shaw mentioned he's four players in with Brian Lohan, sort of senior team, uh, such in training and trying to co competing for places, no doubt, on the starting team as well. Training with the likes of uh, Tony Kelly, John Conlon, Colm Galvin, uh, Shane O'Donnell, David McInerney, uh, night, week, night, night in, night out, maybe two or three times a week maybe sometimes marking them and training, uh, bringing that experience and coming back into the, the, the 20 grades, uh, into Sean's sort of training and set up. Uh, that's obviously going to stand them in, in great feet uh, in terms of what they can bring and what they can learn and bring back to Sean's set up as well. Absolutely. It's great to hear what Sean said there about that. You know, I mean, what, what, what young fellow wouldn't want to play with Tony Kelly or John Conlon or any of those lads, you know, and to be involved and just to see what it's like, like, you know, just to, just to be a little bit of a part of that. I mean, you, you grow, I'd say you grow two inches, like, you know, when you walk into the field and look around to those lids and you want to impress and, and, and uh, you, you know, you, you can't buy that sort of stuff. Like, that's there, to, those lads are the role models, you know, uh, for, for, for our own base players at the moment. Like, they're, they're hugely looked up to. And that's, you know, when, when the minor player is playing it, you know, an underage player, he, he, he's he got his hero. And imagine walking out there beside Tony Kelly on the training pitch. You just couldn't buy that. That, that didn't happen one time. That, did, that just did not happen. They were totally separated. But, uh, my God, you know, I don't, you know, a young fella going into a dressing room like that, you know, it's a, it's a big thing, a big thing in his life. Like, and he's sitting there talking out beside these lads and, 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 and being part of that, that, that set up with it's invaluable, I think, anyway, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's great. And, and, you know, you can always look back and say, even if you don't make it, not every, not everybody is not obviously going to make it, but you can say you were part of that, that structure, like, and that you that you, you, you got the feel. I, when you talk to all the players there about their time, I, I, I meet a lot of players that played in the 70s. They'll always tell you about it. They'll have great stories and the great banter and the great comradeship. You know, any team, the lads will tell you what they were involved in the teams. You know, you'd have friendships for life. I heard with lads in London, they're, they're my best friends there. And we always, they're from different counties and we always keep, keep in contact and, you know, we wish each other luck and all that, you know. So that's the kind of stuff that's, that's happened there, bonding with, with players and getting into the game. And that's what makes the game great, I think, anybody you knows. Uh, and, and, you know, that experience should will live with them forever, like. I suppose, Terence, if I can come to you now in terms of your squad and preparation, obviously you mentioned the schools last year and th th they were a big <clears throat> sort of driving force in terms of seeing players, seeing them in competitive action. You don't have this, that this time around. You probably haven't seen many sorts of club games as well. So when you're meeting those players for the first time on the field next week uh, in terms of maybe if you're allowed back to train in terms of forming a sort of a guideline as well, in terms of evaluating players, do you have to give them that bit extra time now in terms of they've been so long without hurling, working on their touch and their sort of sharpness and stuff like that? Does that make the trial process that bit longer this time around? Yeah, um, definitely the, the, the lads will have to be given an opportunity even just to get to know us as a management team. And also, uh, we said just to, to, to get themselves back in tune with actually playing, playing a full game and, and things like that. But 
I suppose a, a lot will depend on on the a document that's going to be released from from the GA in um, in the coming days as to the the structure of the and time and dates for for the championship. Um, like what you would love to see is a kind of an extended uh, lead-in period this year uh, as a compared to what we had last year, that you actually have that extra three or four weeks where you can give the lads the opportunity to, to really stake a claim to, to make the panel. And also, it'll give us as a management team an opportunity to really cast our eye over, over all of them. Because um, as you mentioned there, like with, with no schools hurling and with no, um, with no club hurling, like they would have played um, out of their age last year at, at minor level. So like they would have been playing in, in, in different positions compared to where they're, they're actual, their own age group and, and they're the, the stronger players in the team. So for instance, someone could have been only playing corner back on a minor team last year, whereas they could actually be centre back now or, or midfield on a club team. So it's just to, 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 to give us all that opportunity, we say that, that you definitely be hoping for an extended lead in period that um, that would be afforded to us. And I suppose, Terence, you mentioned there about players and sort of panels, and we know every year there's a crossover in terms of the dual players, and uh, very much I, the Claire Ethos encourages the, the dual player as sort of underage in terms of its uh, development as well. And I suppose in terms of that, looking um, in, in terms of that sort of guide, are you hoping that the fixtures, the committee that are drawing up the fixtures will learn from the mistakes of last year in terms of the dual player where everything was so claustrophobic in terms of maybe spacing it out this year in terms of maybe player welfare and keeping players that bit sort of fresher that do opt to go down the dual route? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, like over the last couple of years, it has been We'd say getting tighter and tighter. Um, we'd say that the overlap between the the the, the dual players uh, in terms of the games and also in terms of the the, the numbers. Um, like at the moment, uh, working with with Dermot, we we have close on fifteen players that that, that are on both squads. Um, and again, a lot will be determined by by the the, the structures that are released. Um, like if the GA plan on, on running. Um, the, the football and the hurling on, on the same weekends are, we say, within a very, very close time frame. Like, it's putting them lads under an awful lot of pressure. And, and you'd wonder, like, for, for the betterment of everyone, that from what they've missed out on over the last couple of years, we say the last year in particular, should they be afforded that opportunity to, to maybe be allowed to be dual players this year? You know, so it's definitely, like, the GA over the last, as I said, um, over the last couple of years have... In certain situations, with the with the football having the um, league format before they went into play, the, the, the Cork and Kerry um, worked out well in in two thousand and and nineteen. But we'll say in terms of, of last year, um, the, the first rounds were split. But after that, they, they, were, they were being run on the on the same weekends, basically. So like it, it does the GA have have basically to kind of to make a decision on that themselves. And I suppose, Sean, in terms of uh, your 20 setup, we've seen over the last few years that some of the players now that be on your setup will be sort of key, sort of marquee sort of players now for their club teams as well, the sort of leading lights. So how good is that to see as a 20 manager that you're working with probably some of the top guys now for their clubs, the main sort of attacking threats or the defensive sort of players within those club teams that normally would see 19 or 20 year olds maybe out in the flanks or out in the, out in the wings or the peripheral of teams. Most of the guys that you are working with now hold are really hold down central positions within their club teams throughout the county. Yeah, it's, it, it is very good, good to see, Jim. Um, but I'd just like to pick up on a, on a, a point there that Terence Smith or just on, on the dual player before we go into my, my own players. I just don't think it's possible as at this when the, when, we, when the window is too too tight, when you're training one from the other, it is impossible and you don't want to make young young lads make a decision. So I think the G are in an, an awful position this year because it's going to be so tight. And with the minor, they're definitely going to have, have problems because Terence will have them on a Tuesday, he won't have them on a Thursday. It just doesn't make it ideal. It's just something that the dual player issue is a problem here, and hopefully it can be sorted out. But going back to my my own, my own players, there's some 
very good players. We have we have a good spread of players, and as you said, most of them are holding central positions now with their clubs. So, do you know, I I seen them all last year, and I seen them from come coming through from the minor, and it is it is great to see that there's some good players. We have a great crop of players that coming this year, and hopefully we can get the results that they deserve. You know, you don't get what you deserve, Holger, but hopefully we can get through a lot of games this year. And just going back on, on the minor three years ago in 2018, we played four matches. And I'd say the one highlight of the whole year was the day Limerick came to us because the minors were playing, they were under 17. I know they're young players, but the crowd, the whole stadium was full. And I asked my players after and they'd play that week after week if they could. I know we're going into empty, empty stadiums. You know, we were two minutes away from a Munster final that year. We were we were in it two minutes to go, and two minutes later we were out of it. That's how close it was. So going to, into this year's 20 championship, I think the five teams of Munster are fair even, and any one of them can beat each other on a given evening. So we're really looking forward to it. And next Wednesday evening is the start for us. So Wednesday evening is the start for you, Sean. And uh, Sean, in terms of uh, this sort of continued sort of path where you're working with uh, Brian Lohan sort of very closely in terms of interacting and that, and is Brian constantly monitoring uh, with monitoring your squad in terms of uh, play, you go back and you start your trials or training and you see a player that probably wasn't uh, noticed or maybe picked up by Brian, but he starts of flying with your under 20s. Are you maybe in contact with Brian say, listen, maybe this guy has come out of nowhere in the last four or five months. He's been working on his own. Is the door still open for an under 20s player, even at the moment, to get crash a senior squad if they do come back in a particularly splendid form, let's dare I say? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, he's one, one thing about him, he's a great interaction with the 20s now. As, and, and, you know, there's, there's other players that have gone through the 20s and he would ring you up to know he's brought one of them in. There was one of them in there last weekend. So he's, he'd ask you about him because he wouldn't, he probably, he'd know of him, but he wouldn't know the background of him. So he would, it's always open. Yeah. And hopefully he will bring in, because he's four in there. He did 10 in the development squad. That's 14 players. So he's keeping a great eye. And I suppose uh, Seamus co coming to you now in reflection uh, in terms of our development system and uh, in terms of our minors and under 20 teams and I suppose in terms of that's what it's really about really is monitoring how many players that we can come through our, our tw the minors and 20s onto our uh, uh, senior team it's really I uh, dare I say our senior team people will hate the word rebuild or rejig but it's probably an evolving sort of thing uh, in terms of going forward now maybe that people they expect and see and clear in the past when we had those wonderful golden era squads that uh, people are measuring anything but all Ireland finals or monster finals as uh, anything below that is a failure as such. But I suppose the whole mindset really has really has changed maybe in the last three or four years in terms of what it, what is about, what are we looking for in terms of underage, uh, in, in terms of what the success is deemed at underage these days. Well, uh, yeah, I, I suppose a lot of people want to see titles uh, and want to see... Uh, Silverware brought brought home to the county, but ideally, I suppose you know, uh, for Sean uh, as an under twenty manager, he have been taking a very uh, big note of the minor teams of the last number of years because that's where most of his players will come from, and it's similar uh, with terms that have been watching the under sixteens and the under fifteens and going back even to the to the Forestal Cup teams, you know, to see what players are coming through. And at the end of the day. Uh, I, at the end of the day, I suppose the, the squads that Terence and Sean are managing are really development squads on the way to, to senior, which is the, the you know, the, I suppose the pinnacle, the ultimate for players. Players want to be regulars on their senior teams, but you know, they, they, learn, their, they learn their way, I suppose, and they learn their trade coming through the underage. And you know, what they'll be taught at those, uh, at, at, with those different squads, uh, you know, will ultimately play a big part in what they will or won't do when they come to senior level. So uh, I suppose, you know, well, they obviously will be going out with their squads to go as far as they can in their respective championships and win whatever silverware they can. But at the end of the day, that's where the, 
the, the, the players of the future and the players of the senior team, I suppose, develop their skills, you know, and that's a big part of what they, their management teams have to do. You know, they have to prepare these lads for what life will be like at senior level. Uh, you know, so, you, you know, you have all that. It, it's difficult in the modern game, I suppose, in comparison to go, if you go back pre-10 years ago, you know, there weren't as many competitions as there are nowadays. Now there's, there's a huge amount of competitions. Clubs want their players as much as possible because the players are vital to the clubs and any player that makes it to a county panel uh, invariably is a key player uh, in his club setup. And for clubs have to play without players like that, I suppose it weakens the club. So uh, if players want to play every game that they're eligible to play, they could be playing the equivalent of three or four games a week. Uh, you know, during a full season. So there's so many things to be managed, you know. And he's, as Nicholas said earlier, you're trained in shoes and tours uh, in, in the olden days and you played a match at the weekends or one weekend and two. Nowadays, you're doing something every day of the week. You know, there's between training, between dieting, between gym work, uh, between meeting psychologists, meeting uh, physios, there's so much more involved now and it practically is a full-time job whether you're, uh, at whatever level you're at and particularly if you're eligible for a couple of grades like the, the guys that Sean is talking about there who are part of the senior set up at the moment and now, you know, with the, the under-21 um, group training Saturday and as of from this week, you know, <laughs> their demands, the demands on their time is going to get greater uh, and depending on when Croke Park will uh, draw fixtures for what time of the season they're going to fit in the minor and the under 20, uh, you know, then the county has to fit in the club club, the club uh, set up. And while the lads are planning their programs, you have county managers and county or uh, club managers and club officers, uh, you know, shouting for when is their competition going to start and when can they have their players. So there's so much more involved now. Uh, it's it, it's so hard, I suppose, on anybody uh, that takes on these jobs. They have they have so much to do even when they're not in the field with the players. They're plotting and planning and uh, devising ways of having the players and making life easier for the players. And with all the talk about player welfare, then you, know, you have to factor in all that. So uh, it really, it's a minefield, really, in, in the modern game. You know, it's great. It's fantastic for the likes of us and fantastic for all of us. Looking forward to next weekend with six games going to be shown on television between Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and in the current climate where there are no crowds allowed, you know, most holding followers will be watching and waiting for that. But there's still there's so much involved nowadays. I suppose if I can go around this sort of table now and I'll start with you, Seamus, for the last 30 seconds, uh, I'll ask this question to you all now. What would constitute a good year in terms of your eyes, in terms of firstly the minors and uh, our under 20 hurlers for in 2021? Uh, I suppose we'll all say results and progress down uh, up the up the line in the in, in the competitions that we're playing in, like for turns to get his team through to a provincial final, and the same for Sean, and I suppose the same for the seniors. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, if each of those groups uh, produce a couple of new players who uh, will be chomping it a bit to get into the senior team in a year or two, you know, it takes a couple of years to develop a team and to build a team. Uh, so from that point of view, uh, I, I'd like to see new players kind of putting their hand up and saying, look, it's, take note, I'm coming along, I want my place at the senior time, I want to be playing alongside Tony Kelly and Shane O'Donnell and John Connell and these guys. Uh, and I suppose at the end of the day, um, that's what we'd want to see. Now, we're all probably, I suppose, greedy. We all want to see a team bringing home a cup uh, at the end of the day or bringing home a provincial title at least. Uh, but not every team can do that. But to, to compete, to co compete, I think Sean mentioned it there, that any one of the five counties in Munster um, uh, can win this Munster Under-20 Championship. And once, you know, once a team competes well uh, and uh, can match their opponents, uh, and whether they win or lose by a pint or two, but that they're competitive, I suppose that at the end of the day, that would reflect uh, and, and be a good year. I suppose, Nicholas, uh, same question to you now, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, what would constitute a, a good year in your eyes and for our minors and our under-20 uh, hurlers? Yeah, good year. Uh, uh, much the same as what Seamus has said there, really. Like, you know, you go down, you love, you want to win the Munster Championship, like, first of all, and and, and, and and go on, like, you know. But really, when I go down to an underage, uh, you know, be minor runs of 21, you're always looking around for that special player. 
Ted should, Ted should, Ted should want to see, Ted should be saying that he's going to make the senior team, like, you know, and there'll be a few of them, you know. So that's, that's what kind of my side serves as, as, as supporters, from a supporters kind of point of view, is seeing, is seeing that, that's, and there's been a few very special players over the last number of years, and Sean got involved, and, and, and which happens in the lads as well, that, that we've picked out and we see, and we see them coming through now. So that's what, that's what really makes on the for me, is to see the, those players. And sometimes you see a great player and he, and, and, at that age, and in a few years' time, he's gone. So it's not, there's no guarantee, is it? Like, but what 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 it constitutes a good year, and 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 what it's already sounded a good year. Listen, the lads, the preparation they put in, they put in, they're putting in the same effort as Cork Tipperary worked for the Limerick. So you know, we won't be found wanting there, you know. And I'm sure we have talent. I'm certain we have talent. And 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 as Sean said, there isn't much between any team. So putting putting on that that clear jersey with pride is always what I want to see any one of our players uh, doing, and I'm sure this year won't be any different. And I'm really looking forward to to seeing our underage players, you know, all our players, but especially you know the underage starting up. So that constitutes would be a year for me is giving it their best. And I suppose, uh, Terence, I just sort of flipped the question in terms of for you and your minors uh, this year and then obviously looking ahead towards Sean's under, for you, first of all, what would constitute a good year for you and your minor management and your group of players and then also looking at Sean's uh, group as well, what would you in your eyes constitute a good year for them also? Yeah, I suppose from our, from our own perspective, um, like we'd be going out to, to ultimately to, to be ultra competitive and to try and win every challenge match and every championship match that that, that we partake in, like that'll be first and foremost, um, the, the competitive side of it. But really like only one team can can win the Munster Championship, one team can win the All-Ireland. So really you, you pair back into to development. Um, like what, what we're hoping uh, and what we will have achieved by the end of the year is that um, we'd have given these lads like uh, Nicholas there and Seamus and Sean about touched on lifestyle. Like what, what the lifestyle of an inter-county hurler is. So the, the introduction to stats, introduction to uh, video analysis, um, nutrition, SNC, um, we we'll say that even the skills of the game, taking them to the next level. Um, and giving those to all the players to begin with, and then obviously as the panel is pared down, um, honing in on, on the final, whatever it is, 25 or, or 30 players we have. But like it, it's it's hugely important not to, to lose focus of we say the lads that don't make the 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 end twenty five. I suppose like never before um, has it been so so in focus that like you have the, the footballer of the year and the hurler of the year um, from twenty twenty both fail to make their minor um, panels. So like it's it's unbelievable like to say that both the hurler of the year and the footballer of the year from last year's championship failed to make. The minor grade, so like it's, but they've they've spoken about it, and uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Connor Ryan is another one that falls into that bracket that he failed to make it. Uh, Connor from from Cracklow failed to make the clear minor um, minor squad, and three years Connor later, McMahon is Monaghan. There's another yeah, one. But we we'll say Connor was man in the match in the All Ireland drawn final and won an All Star and was centre back in the team when when All Ireland medal three years after failing to make his minor squad as well. So like it's it, it's hugely important, we'll say, to 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 focus on the the, the the 25 or 26, but overall we'll say every one of every one of the players that, that, that we put our hands on this year needs to to understand what it takes to become an inter inter-county player because um, as I said some of those players like um Brian Fenton and, and Garod have commented on, like, it was, not making those panels is actually what has turned them into the players they are today. So, like, it's, it's, it's like in two years' time, if we say two lads that don't make our squad being, being county under 20s or county seniors uh, because of what we've given them and they've gone away and they've thought about it and they said, really, we really, really want this. And they've worked, we'll say, night and day to become senior hurlers. Well, then, it's 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 job job done. Um, we we'll say and I, the same for even for Sean uh, w- with his twenties, like because when you think about it, lads coming out now, like it's something I've been thinking about of, of late, is like coming out at seventeen years of age. Like the hearty has taken on a, a totally different um, we we'll say perspective now that that's actually gone up to under nineteen, 
Um, so that's nearly, the, there's a bridge and squad there. So in the county, we nearly we near, need to get back to where we were. We say in the late 80s, you had uh, the comp, you had Caymans, you had Flannans, uh, being ultra competitive in the hearty and the, the, the Bs and the Cs. Um, and we say that led into the, the 95 team. If you go to the, in the 97 team, the one, the All-Ireland minor, again, we say the schools in Shannon, you're the schools in, in, in Ennis, competing at the, at the tail end of, of those championships. And then you take it on into the 2000s where we were competitive with minor and, and under 21. Again, you had Art Skull, you had Flannans, and, and you had, we said, Caymans and Shannon was, were, were competing in very well, um, we say, when Podge Collins and, and the likes were over there at Harty. So, like, it all feeds in. So we, if we can get back that, we say, we, we set them on the road at under 17. It's picked up in, in the schools at, at the Harty, and then it transfers again into the 20s and transfers from there into the senior. Like, in the space of a couple of years, the, the transformation in the county and the conveyor belt would be massive. I suppose, Sean, lastly, coming to you now for the final 30 seconds, for you and your management and your group uh, of players, what would constitute a good sort of 2021 in terms of the under-20 championship? And in looking on, uh, looking below at uh, Terence's crowd from the young minors uh, coming through, what would you like to see in terms of their championship as well? Uh, on my own point of view, I'm going to be greedy anyway, Jim, because we want to win the Munster Championship this year. That's our aim going out whether it'll happen or not. Going and the this year's draw, the only team we can draw away is Limerick this year. We're at home to the other three teams, which is a huge plus. Not saying that's going to win it for your Renton, but that's a... But other than that, you want to see more players getting on the senior panel, which is without a doubt. You have to feed them into, you have to feed them into that. As I said, I brought in... I brought in an All-Ireland winner with me now this year. Terence knows him well. So we're hoping he'll add a bit of steel to it as well. Gilly, he'll add a bit of humour anyway. And we're hoping to get an, an extra bit out of him there as well. So he's he's been through it all. And hopefully he can add a bit small to the management team as well. As the minors coming through, I tell you, it is... Because we thought the first year, geez, you bring, you bring, we actually played a few minors that came out of the minor below and against Cork. To, and, you know, it was a big, big step up for them. But look, they're reaping the benefits of now to some of them on the senior panel. And that's where you want to be. That's where you want them as well. But as I said, I'm going to be greedy this year. I won't go without a Munster Championship. On that uh, positive uh, note, uh, we'll call it a, a night, a, a, an evening, late night as such. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Sean Doyle, the Clare Under-20s Manager for 2021, and Terence Chaplin, the Clare Under-17s um, uh, Manager, Minor Manager for 21, joining us tonight for a special look at uh, the underage uh, development uh, hurling uh, inter-county squads, and also to see the Pat Wade in onto senior. I would like to thank our regular an analyst, uh, Nicholas uh, Rin and uh, obviously well-renowned uh, Clare Sports journalist Seamus Hayes uh, for joining us this evening. That wraps up our show this evening. Uh, my name is uh, Jim Conlon. Do remember that this show will go out live on our YouTube channel Friday night at 9 o'clock. You will find it on RCB Sport, a YouTube channel. It will also air on our radio station next Monday night from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. live on West Clare Radio, RCB Radio, uh, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. So do tune in Friday night. You'll get to see it on our YouTube channel and do, do turn on your car radios or radios at home on Monday night and or if you're an other part of the player do check in online at www.rcb and do check out our special uh, look ahead to the player inter-county underage squads uh, for 2021 but for me Jim Conlon that's good night God bless take care and we'll see you next week cheers <laughs>